Hello everybody, welcome to the 30th episode of Rambling Weekly. This episode we're going to talk about how people feel they could just pick up something and act like they've been able to do it the same way they were when they left off on it six to eight months ago or longer. Not to say that I am an expert at doing things like that, but uh, I've got a good deal of experience, just like a lot of other people. Now uh, that, hope everybody's doing well, and um, yeah, let's get into it. and like all the other songs are from it's kind of like a spruced up version it only has like 13 14 it might have like 15 tracks on it or something it doesn't have too many let me see if i can bring up the thing real quick yeah it's got 14 14 tracks of spruced up music from my favorite fire emblem game say send no Kefa, or genealogy of a holy war it seems to be a lot of people's favorites and there's some people who are like oh it's not very good take it for what you will hopefully they remake it and treat it as well as they did with fire emblem gaiden i don't know it did spring off to awful awful <laughs> awful games with awakening and fates and yes those are awful games just no, I don't need to fight future shadow zombies, nor do I feel the need to just shunt my offspring into a dimensional island where they can grow old super quick so they can join the, the battle. Kind of messed up. <laughs> anyway, that song is Birth of a Holy Knight. It is the overworld theme or the like map theme of the first prequel stage. It's, uh, I think it is how you... How you put it? It's weird. It's not that it's weird. It's very different from a majority of the series where a lot of times it's like, okay, you know, chap one chapter, one throne, one chapter, one castle, one chapter, that sort of thing. This is one chapter capture multiple throne or multiple castles. It's all overworld map sort of thing. There's not any indoor fighting that goes on. That's all put into Thrakia, which is a weird thing because say you know, genealogy takes place over two generations there's a gap in the middle <laughs> a little bit and the game after it that was released kind of not not quite like dead set in the middle but uh, you know, towards the back end it takes place in the in between those two which is kind of weird but it's cool it's nifty i like it and yeah i uh, i want to also throw out that yuka sujioko she is Credited as credited as the composer, but I think there were a couple others who might have been helping on this soundtrack. I'm not 100% certain on that, but she makes fantastic music. If you uh, like what you hear, you know, check out this soundtrack. But also, if you haven't, Fire Emblem Gaiden is uh, another really, 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 really good one. I don't remember what they call that one though. What is that one called? In the because it was remade in the it was remade in the states or you know remade for the 3ds not just the states but uh what do they call echoes that's what it is uh that's a really really good one and the music is pretty pretty darn tootin good as well also some some notes about this i believe this is the last game that uh, gunpei yokoi was a part of like producing however little bit he may have been involved we'll say <laughs> also of note this is shozo kaga's war handiwork <laughs> we'll say he would go on to leave nintendo and basically make his own kind of fire emblem game that was on the ps1 and ps2 with like tearing saga and the barrack saga games he's also made an indie game which is like verstrick saga or something i mean like the staria saga wow i was way off on that War of the Scions, and then there's going to be a Vistaria Saga Gaiden that I think the Japanese version has released. Maybe I'm wrong, but I know it's set to come out sometime this year, at least in English and stuff. Good music as well. That and they, at least for the the Vistaria Saga, they got the same character designer that worked on Thrakia and stuff like that. So cool stuff. I really like it. I like Fire Emblem, at least the old ones. <laughs> I, I still have not beaten three houses. I haven't played it in forever. I rolled a die to pick one of the three characters and I ended up with the uh, the psychotic one, which I know doesn't quite narrow it down, but he is very loopy, loop-de-loop. -loop. <laughs> and uh, sure, uh, it's it's an all right game, but I, I really don't like 
that they uh, spilled a lot of persona into the game. <laughs> That's really not my cup of tea. It works. I mean, it makes sense. In the same hand, it's not needed. <laughs> At least I don't think so. Too much of that. See, Persona 5 really mucked things up. I mean, I know I know Nintendo and... Oh, who made who made that? Whoever made Atlas. There we go. My brain. My brain works sometimes. Those two were in works trying to make some sort of Fire Emblem pers or like Shin Megami, uh, Megami Tensei. Something they were like doing, working together and stuff. And then eventually those plans fell through. And then you had that F.E. Sharp game that came out on the Wii U and that for Fire Emblem. And then they made some other, other stuff. I'm not as familiar with Atlas's stuff when it comes to that with SMT and Persona. Yeah, they did They did that sort of thing, and after their working together fell through, eventually Persona 5 came out and it was like, oh man, this game is super popular. People really, really like it. It's a touchstone. Uh, what's in a generation kind of game? And then everybody's like, hey, Falcom's like, hey, let's use this for Trails of Cold Steel. And then Nintendo's like, hey, let's use this for Three Houses. Uh, stop it. Please, please stop it. <laughs> Just be your own thing. Don't worry about the other guy. Uh, gracious, gracious, gracious. Anyway, Birth of the Holy Night, good song, good start. It is not a difficult game, I'll say that. There's some tough spots here. All the difficulty got pushed over to Thrakia when that game was released, so have fun with that until you learn how to <laughs> quote-unquote cheat the system. Anyways, I'm doing well. Once again, I want to thank Brian, eight minutes into this thing. <laughs> for being a guest on the last episode there. And if you haven't checked it out, please check it out. We, was, we went over translation and all that fun, fun stuff. What else has been going on for me? Been yeah, busy with work. I mean, like you do. I put out game review for Jupiter Hell. Indie game, fun indie game. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. I'm working on the next one, sort of. I'm kind of dabbling in it. It might not be for a while on that one. I might bounce to something else. But a different indie game called The Last Spell phenomenal music love the music a lot i like the look of it i know it's not for everybody but uh it's a, like a tower defense kind of game where you're trying to defend the center of this town of like different towns and stuff as the uh, the approaching night hordes come to uh destroy stuff and i got to the boss like it i haven't played it in about 10 months and it's still technically early access and stuff and they've been like it is not like it's a wildly different game it is a much better put together game from when I had last played it to now. And I it's it's cool to see. It's great to see that they've, you know, they've sold 200,000 units, quote unquote. And they've, you know, we've been keeping busy with that and getting all that. I think they're on like version 0.97 or something. They're slowly getting there. I was playing through the first town because I just, my file was corrupted from not being like up to date, which is fine, whatever. Playing through the first town and I got to the boss and the boss, boss stage was rather tough rather hard and I totally got pumped but it was really cool like it, it was, like it's a game that at least for me when I'm playing it I got to that boss fight and I'm like oh no and then I seen what the boss started doing I'm like oh no and then the boss joined the fight and I'm like oh no <laughs> I get it. it will put dread in you but it's fun fun game I really highly recommend it and yeah anyway um anything else got going on nope Nope, I don't. I don't think so. I think that was about it. <laughs> uh, I guess my sister and mother. Uh, my sister's gotten over it. My mother it's still going through. It. Has has COVID. I had to help yesterday. So if I end up getting sick and stuff, it is now documented in recording that it, I am blaming my mother for it. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> let it be known. Hopefully that's not the case. It is what it is. Anything else? As I sift around looking, oh, people are going gaga for Xenosaga, or Xenosaga, wow, shows how old I am. Xeno Gears, wait, no, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Xenoblade 3, oh, people are calling it a masterpiece. It irks me. <laughs> Not for the game, I'm, I'm happy for that, it, that people are, like, reviewing it well or whatever. It is amazing to me how each year there is a new masterpiece. Each year there is the new game of... Game of the century, game of the decade, game of the millennium. Each year, it doesn't even have to be game. Movie, TV show. Don't really see it with books so much anymore. People are like, yeah, whatever. Nobody cares for books. <laughs> not so, not so much anymore with books. So amazing how that works. 
I don't know. I, I guess I'm old and grouchy at this point. Anyways, <laughs> we have a more like that. That could be its own rambling weekly topic to talk about. The you know hype. I have already talked about hype, but it's sort of like on the like the the opposite end of hype. Anyway, topic for today is going to be fun to talk about. The end. <laughs> So listen listen to the 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 bump and uh we'll talk about it then. Yeah. <laughs> So this might be a weird transition. I totally goofed and did not mention the song. I just went straight into the topic because I was super excited to talk about it. As you can see how and hear how goofy I am throughout the whole thing. But we're gonna put this. We're gonna we're gonna cut this in, in with the, the 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 magic of editing. We're gonna put this in the beginning of the topic section and point out that the song was Lion King Elstan. Uh, it's the third chapter? Oh, yeah, it's the third chapter map theme. Fantastic song. It is one that I could literally keep on loop, and it, it just very meditative to it. Also, much like most of the ch chapters sing, there's only a handful of them. Well, there's there's like 12, technically. The prologue, the, uh, the epilogue, and then the 10 chapters in between there. But... A lot of stuff goes on. It gets, it starts to get really, really serious and start punching you in the gut <laughs> by this point. So, fantastic tune. Anyway, magic of editing. Woo, 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 woo. So, yeah, like I said earlier, the topic for today is how people can pick up something and feel like they can just go at it like they were when they had left it off. I, just anything. That can go with, like, studying languages. That could be just a habit that you'd have of, oh, you know, or look at New Year's resolutions kind of things where it's like, oh, the, the starting this year, I'm going to lose 15 pounds. That sort of fun thing. I can think, me personally, of, I know I've done this with writing to some degree. I've done it with this channel to a large degree. Uh, <laughs> oops, sorry. Just to throw it out from the gate. I would say that life is very much like playing a JRPG, and when those habits that you want to try to develop and everything, you don't do them for a while, and then you're like, hey, let's get back into it. Mm, it's kind of like playing a JRPG. For the first time, you're like, okay, cool, I'm really liking this, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, mm, this game is really, really getting on my nerves. I'm gonna put it down, come back to it a little bit, and uh, you come back to it a little bit, and you are lost. You don't know what you're doing. You're kind of like, hmm. Hmm, I don't remember the story at all. I'm gonna have to start over because, shoot, <laughs> I don't remember any of it. Ah! I, that's, that's how my brain feels. It, however, I don't feel like a lot of people approach it that way. It's like, oh, I'm putting this thing down or, oh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get back into lifting weights or I'm gonna get back into running, back into painting, back into whatever it is that you want to do. And it feels like a lot of times what ends up happening is we have this preset concept of this is where I I was at 10 years ago when I was doing said thing. And instead of coming to the acceptance of, yeah, the, the talent and skill probably degraded. It probably uh, declined. There was probably either a gradual one or a very steep cliff of which we just kind of went Bleh. and instead of thinking of that it's like mm, no I should be just as good as I was the day I stopped doing it even though I might not have known it was the day I was stopping doing said thing not to say that it's hubristic thinking or people feeling very full of themselves we have enough of that I think this is more of just a lack of reflection slash <laughs> just a, a lack of the dabble of realism and just sort of being like, yeah, probably don't know about that. <laughs> and then what ends up happening is a lot of times people will start to get back into it and then be upset they are not of the same caliber they were when they had stopped it. Case in point for me when it comes to, particularly with music, when I try to make the bleeps and the bloops, I feel like each time I start that back up, because it's not something, like when I throw out a song, 
it's because I had worked on the song for a few days, and I'm like, oh, I, I, I like this. Obviously, it's not like I'm. It's something that I'm. It's not something that I'm doing with the intentions of like, hey, random people of the internet, please hire me to make music. Uh, it was kind of a something I always always wanted to do because I like making tunes. I always have little tunes in my head when I'm just sort of doing things, and I like hum them to myself. And <laughs> Just kind of do 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 do. Uh, nothing, nothing that silly, but uh, it's just a way to attempt to get it out of my head. But things I am not educated nor very skilled at using the trackers and stuff. I might be starting with an idea, but boy, do I go way off track. <laughs> <laughs> it is about one step in the direction and then about 30 in an di entirely different one after I've like spun around in circles for about <laughs> three to four minutes and then closed my eyes. Mm -hmm. it's just It's just kind of how that goes and I just put them out there. I guess it's for me, it's like, hey, this half-deaf goober who has no musical training can make some interesting, I'm not going to say good, interesting bleeps and bloops. You can too. <laughs> If I can be an inspiration for somebody, uh, you know, that's always always a good thing. Inspire somebody who actually has talent and, and the ability <laughs> and the know-how to make their own stuff kind of thing. That's the mentality I, I take with that. Like when I put something when I put something out like that, I, I literally will be like, oh, like that last one I put out, I hadn't touched the Defle mask tracker for months. It's just something like, oh, I feel like making a tune. Bloop, 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 bloop. The end. Not great. We'll say that. Not that the tune's not great. I actually, I like the tune. More so, it's not a great way to go about doing things because you forget how to do things, so you have to relearn. And then you're kind of, you're, you're always stuck in the second gear <laughs> instead of being able to shift it into third or to fourth. Or maybe you need to shift back down <laughs> to one and be like, hmm, this isn't working. I'm doing something wrong that I, I figured out before. I can feel it, but I don't know what I've done. And I don't remember how I undone it <laughs> to get better. And... So now I have to shift back to one and then shift it into two and then maybe shift it into three if I'm really, really doing well. And then, then it's just like, okay, out it goes. That's where I think we have a, a, a societal issue of this as well, where it's habits are so important. Not only the habits, but also developing the habits and then taking the lesson of the development of the habit and extrapolating that into other aspects of our lives. Uh, we, we don't do that. We're just like, oh, you know, we. it feels like we just have this attitude of, ah, we'll, we'll be able to do it afterwards. Ah, we'll, we'll be fine. Not necessarily shirking the responsibility, but instead of making sure we have the preparedness to deal with and to grapple with you know what is ahead or what comes along we have this ah we'll 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 fly with the seat by the seat of our pants and then we'll just we may be down by 12 points but we'll we'll get it within within two and then we'll larry bird it <laughs> or uh, uh, stefan curry it ridiculous loop 40 feet away three pointer and then be super good and yeah <laughs> That's how it kind of feels. And that's really not how you should do things. That is a very awful way to do things. That is a very bad way to do things. As, uh, uh, A, life's like a card game. And you will get some really crappy hands. And you will have to play something from that hand. And, uh, it's, it, life's just going to be like, huh, you know, house always wins. Uh, oh, you have playing, I don't know. I don't want to say euchre, because I always think of euchre, because I'm like, I have... I do not have good hands when I play euchre, and I forewarn my partner, hey, I am not very lucky when it comes to the draw of the cards. So, yeah. <laughs> but I tell them, I may not be very lucky with what I get in my hand, but I'll always, oh, I, I, you, can, I can, you can always trust me to get a, a trick. <laughs> uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm sneaky and clever enough to work it that way but uh, uh life will just usually just kind of be like mm, that's nice too bad i have the trump cards i've got i've got the jack of hearts the jack of diamonds and all the other hearts along the way have fun <laughs> i don't know that's my analogy on that that stop and go is unfortunate and part of that i know is not simply because people just want to toss things aside we just get sidetracked by things there's a lot of shiny stuff some people really like marvel movies and i still ask why but i uh, not really not they're not really my cup of tea silly tongue-in-cheek comments aside you know we get distracted by things we get we don't or we have 
other responsibilities that come in and tip the scales more into, hey, this needs done. Hey, make sure you, you're able to pay your rent on time. Hey, uh, things are getting pricey. You may, may want to make sure you can afford and be able to eat in the upcoming week or so. Things that we need to take care of. In that same hand, though, it, it does fall to you to create the time. Like I always harp on David, who was a guest on one of these earlier episodes. It's the curious case of Fry in the ship of Theseus. If you haven't heard it in a while or you want to, uh, check it out. It's, it'll, it's one of the earlier ones. I want to say it's like episode 21, 21st. <laughs> It's something around there. <laughs> but uh, more importantly, I always harp on him that uh, he needs to create the time. You don't... Life is not going to give you these opportunities to be like, oh, yes, everything will be nice and pretty and it'll be set. Everything will be good. Oh, that's usually not the case. Uh, you might be able to manage that. I know I certainly tried to do that but usually what ends up happening is if i try to get into a situation particularly when i was writing like uh, sudraba i had put myself into a position that was very 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 crummy in a lot of different ways but it was something that yes it was crummy but i had this little cube of time this little this little precious moment it was mine it was a great way to work on the things that I needed to for that. Eventually, that, that broke and I no longer had it. And so I had to force myself. And similarly to now, like I've got a lot more responsibilities and stuff with work and all the time that I needed with that. Uh, I could easily just have slipped back into, oh, I can't do this. I don't have the time for this when it's really me just being lazy. And sometimes, you, yeah, you need to take that personal time to be like, ah, huh. but stop and go. When you take that personal time, you are starting to develop a new habit of taking that personal time. And much like all the shiny, neat things that are out there, it will, like sugar, eat more and 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 more. <laughs> yeah, so you, you have to make this delicate balance. You have to put your foot down and be like, okay, uh, some, like what's uh, a bad page is better than no page at all because at least a bad page can be edited to be better where no page can't really do a whole lot with a blank page. It's the same sort of concept. Even if you have to like force yourself to do the thing you want to do, A, that time in between having started it to dropping it and then picking it back up, uh, you're going to have to start back in first gear maybe. Or you know, maybe it might be in second gear. But you can't just expect yourself to then to be able to shift it into a higher one and be like, yes, good, we're golden, I got it. Mm, that's not how that works. And not only that, it's you're going to be a different person even in that amount of time from when you had stopped it to picking it up not necessarily different as in something it doesn't have to be some sort of wild thing interjects itself into your life that has pushed it into whatever either in good or bad because that, you know that's something we don't ever talk about <laughs> it gets brought up in my favorite movie, Conan the Barbarian. It's like, you know, success as a way of testing your metal <laughs> like no other kind of... I'm paraphrasing the line. Like success, accomplishing goals, uh, accomplishing dreams. They have, the, they have a way of testing you in a way that you wouldn't think. And then you're like, oh, shoot. Well, huh. How do I get over this? How do I how do I figure this out? I like for myself with finishing Sudraba, it's you know, it's like, hey, I finally published a book. Huzzah! But that doesn't mean anything because there's more books to write. Not necessarily that, but it's like, okay, you got the first one done. And it was one that you even said yourself that was gonna on the shortest side. Well, you have all these other stories that are like a lot longer. How are you gonna tackle that there, Mom Frere? So that's you know, you have that. And for myself, it's like, hey, do a little bit of celebration, not necessarily partying or anything, but it's like, hmm. But then it's back to the grind, which sounds miserable in its own way. But I, I, the quote of the day won't do it, but I'll mention it here. It'll be for just because it, it came up beforehand. And I think it's very important. So I'll definitely use it again, but I'm going to reiterate it here from data from the next generation is talking to his offspring we'll say uh it's i think from season three she asks you know why are you why do you try to emulate humans kind of thing it's like pff, we're super duper 
cool, awesome Android. And then his, one of his responses is, it is the struggle itself that is most important. We must strive to be more than we are. It does not matter that we will never reach our ultimate goal. The effort yields its own rewards. That sort of mentality helps a lot, I think, especially for myself. If I hit a moment where I'm just, you know, I've put it down, like with writing or something, or doing these videos, I want to get back into it. And I'm like, but there's so much failure. Like, for example, you know, I put out the Jupiter Hell video and I think in the, I think it's been out for about a day or so and it's gotten bot views, I want to say, because I look at it, it's like three views all for a total of eight seconds. Oh no. But it's more, it's less about that. It's more of, oh, I had fun playing the game. I had fun putting a video together and what lessons or abilities or anything did I learn from doing those sorts of things? Any sort of things? Sure. One is that it's important to, it's not important, not that it's important. It's nice and it's lucky that there are things that I'm not good at but still enjoy. I guess that would be my my lesson if I was to try to extrapolate one from that is that there are things in life that you can be awful at that you can still enjoy. I wish more people took that upon themselves because it feels like a lot of times what ends up happening is particularly because of the internet there are a whole lot of us and a whole lot of people are going to be better at us at everything else <laughs> it's just how it works and some people are going to be better than you at everything and you're just it can make you mad infuriated super duper jealous but why should it uh, like they have their own life they got their own thing going on and you have your own it shouldn't have anything to do with it you aren't competing with anybody else but yourself and not even not even in the sense of oh my past self did this i have to do better than this less that it has to do better it's more of you're working against yourself in the moment in that mo in this moment you choose between doing this thing like say for example there's been plenty of instances and days where it's like i get home from work and in that moment of work or after work what do i choose to do do i choose to be the lazy bum who just sits there and watches youtube videos or listens to music or do i choose to take a moment for myself but then after kind of cooling off for the day and get into doing something like this recording a rambling weekly or recording the review stuff for uh the power on podcast up low status with sushi or do i put out some of those videos do i you know <laughs> what do i what do i do or do i just get a cup of something oolong tea or orange juice or whatever sit down and be like boom uh, yeah, I may have just got off work and got home 10 minutes ago, but I'm about to shift into third, fourth gear and kick some butt. Like that's, it, that is what you compete against. You compete against the moment of those choices. You compete against the choice to do the, the active choice of what it is you want to do versus whatever else. And sometimes, you know, it is better to take that moment to, or day to just kind of be like, okay, take the phone off a hook a while, for a while to borrow a line from Billy Joel. Sometimes you, that is a good thing to do. You need, you need to take a step back. You need to, you know, step away from, say, for myself. I was just talking with David about this and bringing up a great point about you, you can't just be self-centered on your own work and just devote everything to it. You might get more work done, but it becomes a very isolated piece of work then, right? It doesn't really have the tethers of all these experiences and, and cultural points and entertainment that, you, that I've, like, you know, absorbed or anything of the sort. It's just this very isolated ball where people can't really relate and they can see, oh, it, it seems like something, but hands up in the air. I don't know. Shrug. Shrug, shrug, shrug. <laughs> you know? Uh, but, uh, Wow. Dude, this was this was this is rambling all over the place. I need I need Brian or somebody to keep me on track. <laughs> uh, little little uh, peek behind the curtains. I am a very kind host in that I will make show notes when I have a guest. I do not make show notes for myself because <laughs> I am an evil person who likes to torment myself. And also the show is Rambling Weekly, where it's yeah. <laughs> I like to stay true to the topic as best as I can. Uh, but with a guest, I, I don't want to just... Because if you do ramble on, who knows? Uh, partially because it's like, Hey, I got you on to talk about this, but we're not we're going to talk about it for five minutes and then just completely steer clear of that. Uh, it's kind of not appropriate, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing this wrong, but... <laughs>
<laughs> or am, am I doing this wrong? Am I really? I don't know. <laughs> oh, boy. Goodness. Yeah, so if anything to take from all of this, one, I don't know why I'm recapping this, but... <laughs> You will have the stop and go. It happens. It's it's natural. Some people are much better at, at either not having that happen or are able to pull themselves out of the slump and whatnot. No, they're much better at doing it than other people. Or they've built that habit where it's like, okay, yeah, but I still need to do this. So two, if you do have the stop and go, probably not a good mentality to take that, oh yeah, I'm going to be just as good as I was when I had stopped doing this or there won't be any change to it. No, whatever influences and whatnot in between that gap will tinge your efforts and that in any sort of just weakening. The cruel specter of time as it passes. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, but uh, why am I so weird today? <laughs> Those are the two really big ones. <laughs> That's it. Oh uh, yeah, we'll get to the quote thing because I have a different quote in mind. But uh, it's things that even though I use that one, I'll use it again in another one. Uh, that's that's it for the topic. Time for the quote. There is Door of Destiny, or Doors of Destiny. It is uh, the fifth chapter map theme. Good one. Such a, this game's got just some good music all around. I won't go into too much of it, because, you know, like I said before, fingers crossed that eventually this gets remade, a la Fire Emblem Gaiden, into something super de duper instead of being inspiring very, very weak facsimiles of, <laughs> of it. Uh, the quotes I have today is one from Albert Camus from The Plague. And that is, the truth is that everyone is bored and devotes himself to cultivating habits. And that's, and that's where this comes in. We're all bored. We all, you know, that is life. Life is one boring thing after another that we just sort of get, get by. <laughs> I think it becomes less boring when you put in the concentration to think of the moment and be more decisive in how you go about doing it because uh, that's the thing you, you just have convictions in your decisions you make right so I, I, I had said in the previous segment you have these different choices in the moment and if you choose to do this other one like say if you choose to just binge watch stuff uh, have the conviction to stick by that choice in the sense of don't then on the back end be upset that you have no time or that it went by so quickly and all that sort of stuff that's the choice you made Stick with it. Stand tall and shake the heavens with your <laughs> terrible gameplay and disinteresting story. <laughs> That's a, uh, a title for a Game Facts review for Vizeno Gears. <laughs> I still, I love that. <laughs> it's such a such a slap in the face. And I love Zeno Gears, but it, like such a funny, such a funny title for it. Anyway, yeah. So we we cultivate our habits good or bad or busy or not busy I don't know. so uh, and everybody's doing it so just realize that you're cultivating habits by each choice you make and that those choices and this is where I, yeah before in a previous episode i brought up the whole you know having to make choices on something basic like cereal and that sort of thing is that it's it you know sure it's it's a way to quote unquote strengthen the muscle but in the same hand i think it, what it does is you're you're processing so much information that it's an overload sort of thing and i see this with um somebody that i work with who i guess has really bad bouts of adhd and add and they'll be good for about three to four hours and then they just hit a wall and just <laughs> can't really concentrate it's really really tuckered out so yeah uh, that's where I'm going with that. That's uh, I, that's the concern that I have. 
uh, where was I going with that? Oh, but that's the, the because of all that extra information that they're processing. They're taking they they can't put the blinders on to focus on the one thing, and so they're just t- taking any extraneous information, and then the brain overloads, and they're just kind of like Poo, deflated balloon. I think that's part of part of the problem of having excess choices even for the most mundane things where if you and i have this with i'm very stereotypical guy of shopping i will be like okay i need eggs so the store then becomes an egg store and there's nothing else there like uh, i went into a GameStop, and i my sister came with me so i was kind enough to give a little bit of more time to it but i went in and bought live a live for the switch and i knew what i was going for seen it First thing when I stepped in, I was ready to go. But my sister wanted to go and kind of take a look at things. So I was like, okay. But myself, what I would do at that point was just be like, boom, boom, gone, done. Uh, I mean, I did end up buying uh, another mug, but it's because I like mugs and I am old. So I collect fridge magnets and mugs now. <laughs> my my collecting things are Kirby's, Slimes, Didakuma, fridge magnets, mugs. And that's about it. <laughs> this is what you do when you when you are old. Not quite feeble yet, but just old. <laughs> but, uh, but it's kind of how my brain works. I, I put on hyper blinders for better and for worse. And it's just like, this is, this is the focus. Because I'm the other way, particularly with like social stuff. Like social stuff really tuckers me out. I'm just like, ugh. I'm just doing something like buying something. Oh, I just need candy. All right, I like Twix bars, so Twix bars. The whole store is only filled with Twix bars. I'm not sitting there fiddling around and going, oh yes, yes, this one, this was a no. nope, boom, got it, go, go, done, the end. Uh, I don't know if developing that sort of habit help would help for people or what, but yeah, and I get that it, it becomes harder and harder and harder with all the with the the. Every little connection at the tip of your fingers because of your phone, which is why I don't use my phone as much. And I just stick, I, I stick to my internets on my computer because that's, I don't know, I think that's a better way to go about it because it divorces, it keeps me away from it. That's like having music on my phone or something. That's really about it. That or, you know, having to text for work or, or phone calls or something. But that's it. Ta-da! That's, that's the quote again from Albert Camus in The Plague. The truth is that everyone is bored. And devotes himself to cultivating habits. Last tune is the it is the tenth, I believe. Yeah, it's chapter ten's theme. It is uh, light and dark. Really, really good song. And I believe, if uh, memory serves, it was used as a like side fight in Path of Radiance as kind of like a like special different battles and stuff, mock battles that are set up and stuff. Good tune. Good, good tune. That are light inheritors. I think my uh, one one of those two. I think this has been used in something else, but that, it's a good tune either way. That's it. I don't have anything else. Thanks for listening, uh, and I'll see you later.